What's up in the house? It's your boy Dan Boy, back with another video. Today we're gonna have a look at Phase 5 best in slot PvP gear, both for non-rankers and rankers. I'm gonna provide you with some alternative items as well, so you can make your own set with what kind of gear you have. And after that we're gonna compare the two sets so that we could see the differences and maybe we might come to the conclusion that the rank 14 gear will soon be outdated or at least on par with the non-ranker set. Stay tuned and make sure to hit that sub button to get notified on future content. Let's get to it. To start out with we're gonna talk about phase 5 beast pvp set for non pvpers meaning you have obtained at least rank 2 to get the insignia of course. The set looks like this and we're gonna use Bone Weaver's Edge. This is still best in slot for PvP till phase 6 till you can get the weapon from Nax Ramas from Keltasad. We are gonna be focusing on stamina of course. Can't do any damage if you're dead. In this set we're going to be using full tire 2.5. I'm going to show the alternatives to the current pieces I picked. For the head slot, this is the best one in my opinion. As for the neck, there is a lot of opportunities. For instance, you can use the Exalted CG Neck, Rage of Mogamba. If you're doing Warsong Gulch, this is nice. It reduces the cost of your hamstring ability by two rage points. If there is a Druid, or the like, it's very nice to have reduced rage cost on your hamstring. You can use the a Tooth Pendant if you want more crit, but you gotta remember the hit cap in PvP is only 5%, hence why I went with Barb Choker, because I picked other pieces that give me this 5%. Against melee intensive setups you can use master dragon slayer's medallion it gives you more stamina and also gives you defense so they have lower chance of critting you same goes for pendant of the kiraji guardian as for shoulders congress boulders are the best ones i have left no alternatives you can of course use something from blackening layer but that is not best in slot again these also provide defense against melee intensive setups so all in all very good piece for cloak we have a bunch of options as well we have cloak of concentrated hatred this is a decent overall cloak which also provides us one hit but if you decide to go with the Nixia tooth pendant for instance you can pick another cloak cloak of the fallen guard is a great alternative a lot more crit you can go with Cloak of the Cold, Golden Hive if you want some defense, again against melee intensive setups. Get a little bit more stamina as well. And of course Cloak of Concentrated Hatred. As for the chest piece, we're going to be using Congress Breastplate. There's some alternatives here. You can use Savage Gladiator Chain if you want to have some more crit. But again, you're going to lose armor and stamina and strength. So, Also, I found out recently from a viewer that you can get this decent chest here. It's a one hour cooldown though. But if you're like playing against a Shadow Priest that shields a lot or a Warlock when they do the shields and you, you basically get no rage, you can use this chest. But of course, it takes 30 seconds for it to be able to be used, right? And you do lose a lot of stats as well. I actually wasn't aware of this item, but um, now I've gotten it. As for bracers, we're going to use bracelets of wrath. The reason for this is they have so much stamina, 27 stamina with 9 stamina on top of that. They do not provide any agility though for crit, but um, there's some alternatives if you want more crit, but less stamina and strength, but and more strength though. Berserker Bracers from Morrison Gold's Exalted. Very decent pair of Bracers. There's also Bracers of Brutality that is a tiny bit better than Berserker Bracers from AQ20. As for weapon, there's a lot of possibilities. I guess it depends on your playstyle as well. 
Bone Weaver's Edge is bis, but again, if you're soloing, I feel like Bone Weaver's Edge, you just get stuck with the buff, right, when it actually bugs. So when I'm soloing, I'm using my rank 14 weapon. But if you have a Paladin or if you're popping fabs all the time, this is definitely the go-to, the best in thought weapon. For other alternatives, you have Escanti, more stamina, more attack power. You have Dark Edge of Exanity if you want to go Axe Spec and get 5% extra crit with Axe Spec in your talents. And of course, you need a shield and one hand as well when you're PPing. If you're flag carrying, you're propping shield wall and the like. Uh, if you're Axe Spec, you of course want to use the appropriate weapon for that. So in this case, Kroll Shuruk is the best one hand together with the shield. As for swords, you can either use Chromatically Tempered Sword, decent stats on it as well, or you can use Ravencrest Legacy. This is from the AQ Gates opening chain quest. It's a reward from that. As for axes, again, you can use Bless Kiraji War Axe. Personally, I'm gonna go with Rank 14 Sword, of course, because I'm not taking uh, these PV swords that my uh, other guildies need. As for uh, shields, there is the Elemental Reinforced Bulwark from Blackwing Lair. Very decent shield. The best option in Phase 5 is the Bless Kiradi Bulwark. It does provide you a little bit less stamina, but it gives you 70 armor more. One more defense. A little less block value, but increases your chance to block attacks with the shield by 3%. As for looks, the Reinforced Bulwark from Black Malaria is definitely the coolest looking. So, again, it's a matter of preference. Trinkets. Insignia of the Alliance, of course. With this off cooldown, you uh, auto equip with item rack, and you can use, for instance, Life Divine Gem when this is off cooldown. You can use Batch of Swarm Guard to even further reduce the flag carry or the likes armor. You can also use Jump Gabar when you're nuking people, together with. Well, Batch of Swarm Guard is of course a nuker, a nuke trinket as well. But if that's on cooldown, you can use Jump Gabar, which is an insane trinket as well. Gives you 65 attack power every 2 seconds until the duration ends after 20 seconds. There's a lot of other trinkets you can mention as well, but I just wanted to find out the new one in AQ, the new ones in AQ, and then um, the Black Moon Layer one. As for rings, there's plenty of options again. If you don't have the exact setup that I'm doing here, you can use. Ring of the Karaji Fury is definitely worth using. It's 12 stamina, 40 attack on 1% crit, and we just don't want that crit, right? And the second ring we're going to use is 14 agility, 28 stamina from Nefarian. And the reason why we're taking this is because it's bright. It provides us 28 stamina. It's, it's insane, basically. And around 0.7% crit as well. For other options, Quick Strike Ring provides a little bit less stamina than uh, Ring of Karaji Fury. That's why we swapped it out. There is Ring of the God Slayer. A lot more agility but less stamina compared to Ultimate Series Ring of Reckoning. Band of Curia if you are missing hit. And Circle of Applied Force. But my personal perf preference is these two, of course. As for boots, there is a lot of options. We're using Congress Greaves. They have decent stats, they have the most stamina for boots in the game. And some defense as well. And other alternatives is Boots of the Fallen Hero, if you're missing it. Almost the same stamina but less agility. And there's of course Chromatic Boots. These provide you 4 stamina less than Congress though. And that's why I pick Congress over Chromatic. For legs, we have Conger's Legarts. These are very decent as well. Again, providing defense, which is nice against other melees, so they have less chance to crit you. And they give you that 1% hit that you want for uh, the 5% hit cap. As for the belt, nothing's changed. Onslaught Girdle is best in stopped, in my opinion. You can definitely get another belt with more stamina, but you do want some DPS, like some some damage stats as well, right? Last but not least, Gauntlet of Annihilation. Insane stats. 35 strength, 15 stamina, 1% crit and 1% hit. Again, this helps us get further to our 5% hit cap and basically just halves everything we need. 
more strength and more crit as well. We're briefly gonna have a look at the phase 5 Beast PvP set for rank 14 players. We are going to use more or less the same items, but we have a few changes. We are going to be using Cloak of the Fallen God from AQ. We are going to be using Ring of the Kiraji Fury instead of Quick Strike Ring. And then of course you have the trinkets again that you can use from AQ. And that is basically it. Because again, we need to remember the 5% hit cap, and that's why we're using Onisha Toothband in this set and not Bark Choker. We could of course also change a ring, but we're going to lose stamina that way. So this is the set I, I'd prefer. Having a quick look at it, it's the full PP set. With Bracelets of Wrath, Bone Newer's Edge again of course. Blaster Shot Launcher, this is the best ranged weapon I see in the game for Phase 5. 6 stamina and 1% crit. Insignia, Hand of Justice when your other trinkets are on cooldown. And the rest is PvP gear. Together with Onslaught Girdle, of course. The reason we want to keep this set is because to reduce cooldown on your intercept ability by 5 seconds and you get the 40 attack power. Plus, it has such great stats as well, the set. And the reduced hamstring rage cost as well. Anyway, let's compare the two sets. Phase 5, when you get this best in stock gear for PvP as a non-ranker, you're almost going to be on par with the rankers. To start out with, of course, we have 5% hit in both sets. The ranker set has 2.4% more crit, but the non-ranker set has 108 attack power more. On top of that, the ranker set has 6.1k HP and the non-ranker set has 5.8k. Another thing to mention here is that the ranker set only has 5400 armor and 314 defense, whereas the non-ranker set has 365 more armor and also has 26 more defense. What each point of defense does is it gives you 0.04% dodge, parry, block, reduced chance to be hit, and reduced chance to be crit. So in total, these 26 extra points in defense actually gives you 1%.04 extra dodge, parry, block, reduced chance to be hit, and reduced chance to be crit, which is actually very nice as well for survivability. Anyhow, that concludes this BIS PvP guide for Phase 5. I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to hit that sub button down below, throw me a like, and a comment down below if you have any questions, suggestions, and the like. It would be greatly appreciated. I stream on Twitch Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday from 7pm to 11pm. If you have any questions, come in there or chat with me. I'm always open to help you out. Thanks for watching and as always, have a damn great day out there.